Administration of life-saving medications in the pre-hospital setting may be one of the most important things an EMT will do for their patient. It requires the ability to recognize life-threatening conditions, such as hypoglycemia or an asthma attack. Knowledge of which medications are used to treat these conditions and how those medications are administered. Some medications can be administered by the EMT, such as aspirin for chest pain and oral glucose for hypoglycemia, while other medications, such as nitroglycerin for chest pain, bronchodilators for difficulty breathing, and epinephrine for allergic reactions, must already be prescribed to the patient, and the EMT will only be assisting the patient with his or her own medications. Nebulized medications are used for patients who have serious respiratory illnesses and who may need larger doses of medication or longer inhalation time than is offered via the metered dose inhaler, although one is not necessarily better than another. Like the MDI, a nebulizer is a device that is used to aerosolize medications into a mist for delivery directly to the lungs causing bronchodilation. The nebulizer device needs to be connected to oxygen in order for the medication to be aerosolized. A handheld nebulizer has a chamber in which the bronchodilator medication is placed. It is connected either to a mask, mouthpiece, BVM, or tracheostomy collar. In most EMS systems, the mouthpiece is the delivery method of choice, as patients who are experiencing shortness of breath may feel claustrophobic from an oxygen mask tight to their face. Knowledge of the medication being administered is essential. Many of the bronchodilators act by way of stimulating the sympathetic nervous system, which can cause tachycardia, palpitations, and a feeling of nervousness or anxiety as side effects while creating the desired relaxation of the airways. Most bronchodilators begin to work immediately and their effect can last for hours. Let's take a close look at the steps involved. Take BSI precautions. Explain the procedure to the patient, gaining his or her consent and cooperation for the medication administration. Reconfirm the five rights of drug administration to include acquisition of the right medication prescribed to this patient, the right dose, which is usually one vial or bullet, the right route, which will be nebulized, and the right time, which is during acute respiratory distress. Unscrew the lid of the nebulizer chamber, add the correct dose of medication, and reattach the lid. Fasten the T-tube to the nebulizer chamber. Connect the mouthpiece to one end of the T-tube and the flex tubing to the other end. Remove the patient's non-rebreather mask. Attach the oxygen connecting tube from the nebulizer to the oxygen source. Adjust oxygen to 6 liters per minute. You should be able to see a mist coming out of both the flex tube and the mouthpiece. Help position the patient as upright as possible. Ask the patient to hold the nebulizer in their hand and to place the mouthpiece in their mouth. Lips should be sealed tightly around the mouthpiece. Ask them to breathe deep and slowly through their mouth. At times it may be necessary to shake the chamber slightly to remove medication attached to the wall of the chamber. Continue this treatment until the full amount of medication is gone, which can take 5 to 20 minutes. Then, remove the nebulizer and continue oxygen therapy through an oxygen face mask if the patient will tolerate it. If the patient's tidal volume, respiratory rate, or level of consciousness seriously decline, discontinue the medication administration and begin assisting ventilations immediately with a bag valve mask.